Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Four Horsemen Studios Figure Obscura, Frankenstein's Creature. If Saturday morning cartoons fueled your imagination as a kid, and powers your action figure collecting now as an adult, then you're in the right place. Thanks for stopping by, and welcome to Saturday Morning Toy Collector. And if you like my content, please consider subscribing. All right, just taking a look at this beautiful, beautiful painting on the front of this package by Nate Barch. It's gorgeous. You have the creature front and center. You have the beautiful logo here. You can see that he's in this like this purplish sort of like um, forest. He's running and then here on the cliff side, you can see some villagers with torches uh, chasing him. Uh, we have the artwork continuing on that side. Same thing here. And this whole front piece is uh, a slip cover. Uh, and then here on the back, we have some more drawings of uh, different utensils and, and pieces of machinery and anatomy drawings and the creature itself and then different instruments. All of this drawn and sketched by Nate Barch. And then you have here this beautiful uh, little write-up of the original uh, Frankenstein or the modern Prometheus as written by Mary Shelley. Uh, nice little write-up of that uh, there. And then you have some little information uh, in the corners of everybody who worked on this. And then the front part of this is held on by magnets. So we can take that off. And then the inside of this becomes a very nice uh, backdrop, again, painted by Nate Barch. And it is of Dr. Frankenstein's lab with his desk uh, right there in the middle. And then uh, the window uh, open and then some lightning going on in the background. And then you have this nice window box of the figure itself inside of the package. We have that 4-H logo on the top, letting a little bit of the light come through and you can see a lot of what's included, but not everything. And then Frankenstein's creature and then more of those sketches. So let's get this guy out of the package and dive in to all of its monstrosities. I did want to show how this is kind of trayed up. You do have two trays. The top tray has uh, Frankenstein's creature, uh, his two main heads, um, uh, one of the bell jars, some books, his lower wraps down here in the bottom are his uh, feet, his bare feet. And then you have parts of the table and then some machinery here. And then in the secondary tray, you have some more of like uh, his straps, some more machinery, some more table parts, the chains, um, the book here in the back, taped to the back. You have his hands, um, more parts of the table, some more bell jars, and then two additional heads right here. So that's how all the parts are laid out in the package. As far as the book goes, we have some of that beautiful artwork from the front of the package again. Uh, you can see more of the cliff this time and more of the villagers in the background have the logo, the website. And then on the inside, let's see what we get here. Um, Frankenstein's creature. Uh, we have like the people who worked on it, Eric, Nate, Jeremy, uh, excerpts from Mary Shelley or the modern Prometheus, uh, Frankenstein or the modern Prom Prometheus by Mary Shelley and then figure obscura. And then, um, we have a little write-up about the book and about Mary Shelley herself. And then we have a couple of excerpts, again, along with some of the drawings that were used on the package, the painting that's used on the package. And uh, this is a pretty substantial book. I liken it to the, uh, the book that we got with the Anubis and Bastet. It's about that thick. There's lots of pages, lots of stuff here. If you want to read it, um, you, certainly, you certainly can. Uh, yeah, it looks really nice and uh, this is substantial. I do want to flip through this even though I've read the book a few times I do want to go back and just read through this um, beginning to end um, Before I put this back in the box. All right I feel like we should start with um, the tables uh, and kind of put those together and then you know Sit everything out on them. So here we have like the little base for like the, um, the Operating room table you can see it looks like it's that old metal style uh, with a, like a ceramic coating um, that's been chipped away of, after uh, years of use. And then we have this support base 
I know this is not functional. It does not raise or lower. It is all just one piece. You can see here how you do have it's more of that chipped paint. So let's put that in. It's just like friction holds that in there. It's not going to come off. It's in there pretty well. And then we have the top of the table, which is just, you know, there's no weathering. It's just uh, just a metal gray um, table. Uh, and then we're just going to put that together and we'll sit that right back there. And then um, the next thing that we have is we have the base for the the actual um, chair or table that um, Frankenstein's creature is on. You can see again some a lot of that chipped paint. It looks really nice. It looks heavy and old and metal. And then um, we have the table itself which comes in this very large um, intricately designed piece uh, here. So we have this portion of the table which um, rotates uh, and it's got a very tight indent on each of these so it will be able to hold uh, the creature at angles um, but you can see uh, we have some spaces on the side for the straps we have a hole here in the back which I'm not sure what's for I guess maybe we'll figure that out soon you have these um, wheels on the side that are not functional they don't turn or anything then you have the heavy um, rail system and then again it is also on a base uh, old metal looking it's all plastic but you know it looks like that old metal with all the chip and look at this large scuff right here from like years of the of the foot pedal like rubbing up against it up and down right there that's a super nice touch of course the foot pedal is not movable this is all one piece you just want to be very careful when removing it uh, from the package and you know and or this thing falling off your shelf but you just plug that on right there and then Let's lay it flat for right now and set it off in the background because we may need to put some things on it as well. Um, so we'll just leave that back there. Um, first up, we have one of the bell jars. Um, so you've got this nice little bell jar. It looks kind of like it has a wooden base and it has this little plastic and it's just friction that holds that on. And then you can put things in here um, like whatever you want. But we do have, you know, um, let's... Let's put, so like we have this additional head right here that we have that can go on Frankenstein's creature uh, itself. It's this very withered yellow uh, Mike Mignola style skeletal like skin pulled tight head uh, uh, with some sunken eyes and you know, very glassy eyes. You can see there's like a, um, like a varnish um, put on the eyes, which is really nice, and like the pupils are like ghosted out, and the lips are blue, and teeth poking through. This is just, I mean, just look at the detail on that. It's just wild. Uh, it's got like some skin, or you know, maybe a nail pushed through there, or some skin picked off there. It's just gnarly. So let's just take that head and then just set it in there underneath, and we'll put that head in the bell jar and we'll put that right over here um, next up we have another bell jar that's a little smaller than this one you can see the size difference well it's about the same height um, but it's not nearly as uh, wide and it's more squared off than round uh, again looks like it has a wood base friction holds it on but we have this additional skull here uh, with a non-articulated jaw of course both of these heads are usable uh, you can put these on anything so let's just put that head uh, on uh, the base and then put that in there so we have another head and another jar we'll put that right over there uh, and then of course we have a smaller uh, bell jar as well and then uh, we have this little hand which is like your kind of like a withered skeletal hand uh, with you know messed up fingers which you it is on a hinge you could use this as an actual hand but uh, let's take that and let's put it down in the jar and set that in there and we have another little something that uh dr frankenstein has been studying um let's get into the books um we have three books that come with this and i am pretty sure with because all of my uh, mythic legions are currently in storage because i'm um, redoing my room right now uh, i'm pretty sure these are the books we've seen before maybe with jacob marley uh or you know um some of the other figure obscura figures that we've had because we got those plugs so, so uh you know it's got some ruffled pages in there we have a little purple bookmark it has some nice black and purple uh, paint on the book itself that looks super nice we'll put that back here um, we have a, a red uh, journal 
Uh, this may be Dr. Frankenstein's uh, journal here that he's writing in every day. It's got a little leather belt and clasp on it. Uh, again, it doesn't open up and it has that porthole on the back if you want to put that on, on anything. Uh, and then we have another little small journal. This actually looks more like a diary or a journal that he would write in. It's got the little nameplate on the front, you know, where he would en engrave his name. So anybody who picks this up would know that it is his. And uh, that looks very nice as well. And there is a porthole in the back of that as well. Uh, next up, we have some pieces of equipment. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know what these things are. Uh, I think Bill uh, over at Dork Lair kind of revealed what he thought these were and what these were called. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, but you know, you do have a little hole here at the top. If you can see that, um, you have these nice stacks, which looks like stacks of ceramic plates or maybe metal plates or magnets or something like that. You have holes down here at the bottom because there are some um, uh, wiring on another piece. It looks like you could probably feed that wire all the way through here, um, but we'll put that back there for right now. And then we have a bigger piece of equipment and this has the the hose but is actually just a bendable uh, wire that you can uh, unravel and then feed this through that piece of machinery that we just looked at and none of this is functional this doesn't spin it's all one piece uh, again i don't know what this is called but it is very intricate it looks very nice it is beautiful it's well made it's well crafted we're filling out um, all of the uh, sort of like Victorian trinkets that we could possibly want to set up like a Victorian diorama. Uh, you can see that this cable is completely removable. It has two places in here, so you can really set up the equipment any way you want. Uh, we're going to leave that off for right now and put this piece of equipment back here as well. And then we have three more pieces that go with that, and that's these little canisters, which could be like little burners or they could be... Um, I just, I really don't know, little vials of like chemicals that the cord could pass through doing different things. You do get three of those uh, and we can set those up on the table um, later on. Uh, the next things that we have here to look at are we have these heavy duty straps. These are big leather straps. They're plastic, of course, but they look like leather um, for strapping down um, Frankenstein's creature. Of course, the larger ones would go across his chest and arms and then the lower ones, the smaller one would be for his um, legs and feet. And then we have some broken pieces of chain and we have four of these. We have two larger ones um, for his legs and uh, they have real metal chains and little plastic uh, cuffs. And these are for his legs. And then we have two smaller ones that are for his wrists. And uh, again, what you would probably do here is pop the feet off, pop the wrist off, wrists off, slide these on, and then pop your feet and your wrist back on. But we do have those pieces there. So that's all of the accessories that come with Frankenstein's creature. Okay, so this is kind of how I decided to route this little wire was from this machine through the little canisters, through this um, apparatus right here, and then back around and then back through the machine. It's very finicky. The wire is almost maybe like one gauge too thick. Like maybe a one gauge smaller or thinner wire may have made this a little easier. It's especially finicky um, going through these little holes here in these canisters. Uh, and then there's a fair amount of wire left hanging down the end. I may snip that off, maybe make it not quite as um, long. But I do think, you know, maybe a thinner gauge wire may make this a little easier. You do have to be very careful when pushing them through like this piece or this piece, you actually can chip some of the coating or the paint off the wire. I've done that in a couple of places. It's a little finicky, but not too much that you can't handle. And it's definitely not, a, you know, intrusive or frustrating, but it's just a little finicky. Just be careful. You don't, you know, chip the paint off your wire if that's something that's going to bother you. Okay, now going over the uh, accessories for Frankenstein's creature himself, we do have this um, wrap that will go around his waist. And I know like a lot of people are probably saying, hey, isn't this the exact same wrap that we got with uh, underneath the mask of the Red Death, just painted differently? No, it is larger. I don't know if it's the exact same piece, but um, scaled up because this guy is a brute scale figure. So he's larger than your regular one, uh, 
you know, uh, 1.0 style uh, Mythic Legions, but this wrap piece is beautiful. It does indeed look like fabric and not like rubbery plastic that it actually is with frayed edges. It just looks gorgeous. Um, as far as his uh, accessories go, like head and hands, he does come with two gripping hands on him in the package. And you can see how they are detailed with the stitches on the hands uh, right here around this one. This one going up across the middle part of his thumb, uh, the gnarly like fingernails and then stitching and um, dirty paint on the back to where it looks like he's been, you know, um, dug up um, because he has um, we also get two um, additional hands these are more of your Frankenstein monster like gesturing hands you can see that the stitch pattern are the same on each so it is like it is the exact same hands just reaching forward they're not stitched in any different way and these of course are on uh, horizontal hinges and I really dig um, this particular um, look for them uh, this will probably be the hands that get the most use on my particular figure on my shelf uh, then we have two uh, bare feet if you don't want to go with the shoed feet and again they look gorgeous the gnarly like toenails the stitching on this foot uh, all of the details it even has stitching on the bottom where the stitches have now come out um, which would probably be the case and they're bleeding slightly so that is just a crazy amount of detail just the storytelling there is pretty fantastic the vein work the paint work sculpting and painting coming together in harmony making something so grotesque be so beautiful then we get um, three different heads we get this particular head right here with this larger um, scar and stitching across the face um, drawn up around the mouth uh, you can see the lips you can see the eyes and i can't really see the eyes very well um, let's see if i brighten turn up my light a little bit you can probably see the eyes down in there uh, and the stitching behind the ear um, we have another head that is very similar to that. Um, uh, it's just a different, uh, you know, expression, but the stitch work is the same. Uh, the vein work is the same, but he just has his mouth closed, not nearly as snarling, um, so that you can see the detail there. Look at that. Oh, that's crazy. Taking a closer look at the head that comes on him in the package. This, as you can see, is you know, the exact same head that we have here, the stitches in the same place, um, the lips, the nose, the, the skin being pulled up around the, the, the mouth being stretched around. Uh, you can see that it's the same head, it just has hair. Uh, this hair is not removable, you can't put you know this head this hair on this head for anything um, because you you know you would have like the keyed section here uh, unless they did magnets or something so you, you either have you know two options that are hairless and then this option um, with the hair I do think you know anytime I, I I have to say like I'm 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 more of a fan of sculpted hair than I am rooted hair I don't wish that this figure had rooted hair but I'm also not a fan of sculpted hair that hangs down in the face but this is done so perfectly i mean the way that it is you know kind of one strand pushed behind the ear and one strand over it and then one strand under um the way it hangs here so naturally it's 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 perfect it, just the way they did it the material used uh is perfect and the uh, the paint on here is absolutely fantastic um, so, I mean, I have no complaints. Uh, I thought for sure one of the bald heads would be my favorite after seeing this guy, but after having it in hand, I, I think this one is the way it's going to go on my shelf. As far as taking a look at Frankenstein's creature here, we are basically going to look at this guy in his various forms, starting at his most basic and then moving up all the way to his, to his clothed form and so i just wanted to start him out in the base look here um bald head the wraps and the bald uh and the the bare feet and also without his pants we will take a closer look at his pants how they work and his jacket uh, as we build him up in the different layers of clothing um, that we can put on this guy um, and so just wanted to give you guys a straight look at the creature uh, in his most basic form so the next layer up is we have the soft goods pants and his um, boots. And so with the soft goods pants, um, when you take the, the, the wraps off, there's actually a little black spacer that you put in between the waist and the um, torso. Uh, and that is to make a more um, like solid base in the middle of his waist for the pants 
um, to sit at. Uh, and it's black, and I'm going to show you guys that in just a minute, but I did want to show that that does, like, just wanted to mention that that is in there. We have these nice black pants, uh, I'm assuming by C. Jessam, and you can see that there's holes, and there's dirt and distress. They're frayed at the bottom, and they look very nice, and I'm quite sure you could probably put these on some other Mythics, or maybe some other 1 12th scale. I'm wondering how they would look on, like, say, the Mezco 1 12th Collective King Conan. Um, but yeah, this is the next, um, next level up. And then here we have uh, the creature with his overcoat on. And I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite plastic coats that I've ever messed around with. The material that this is made out of is beautiful. It holds the sculpt so well. It looks like fabric. It looks like material, but it is very soft and pliable and it moves very well. This is a fantastic coat. I don't know what crazy material like this is made out of, but it moves and performs so beautifully that this is to me is like one of the most perfect examples of where I think something that's more plasticky uh, as and rubbery is actually better than soft goods in this one particular case. Now taking a closer look at the creature with um, the coat on and everything, uh, I just wanted to show off this beautiful coat. You've got some rips and tears right here where this looks like the sleeve is getting ready to come off. You have these beautiful buttons and even a patina on the clasps. Uh, that just look fantastic. This fur looks like real fur, even though that it is sculpted. You've got some rips and tears here. I love how the material in the coat has been pieced together from other colors and other materials, just like uh, the creature is. Uh, you can have it more open, more closed. You can have one side overlapping the other. You've got more rips and tears around here where some of the seams and stitches is, is, is coming loose. It's just, it's absolutely fantastic. You can see that it is very, you know, rubbery and, you know, it does hold its shape, but man, it's just the way that it is, it, it's it's fabricated is fantastic. Here's a closer look at those boots. Um, you know, you can see how they, they uh, fit and there's the weathering and the torn edges, frayed edges uh, at the end of the pants. Now I did want to, you know, sort of show you how, how easy it is just to slip this coat off. You just, you know, Pull it back over his arms it comes right off no problem you do have this uh, rope that is stitched onto uh, the pants so it's not going to come off you can untie it and just have it hang loose if you want you can see where it's stitched it's not going to come off and then there's a piece of velcro right here that holds it together and then here is that um, spacer piece that you just pop the torso off and put on and this is solely for the pants you want to remove this if you're going to use the lower uh, loincloth piece uh, and you know, they, they go together very well. And then, oh, it's so hard to do this from behind the camera. Um, so you just wanna get that lined up. You can't even see the Velcro once it's put together and then you can tie this or leave it hanging loose. And it just looks great. The, the detail uh, on this guy, the, the way the body was cut open for the autopsy, uh, organs removed or replaced, um, the stitching around the neck, the stitching around the arms, it's just the vein work, the color work. It's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Then you've got um, this split that is almost running from the back of his skull all the way down his back that has not yet been stitched. Uh, and you know maybe like this was something he was going to do later, but um, the creature has already come to life and there's no need to do it. And then there's a little split right there that hasn't been stitched up as uh, um, either. But let's see. Let's pull these down a little bit so we can look at the legs. So let's pull those off. Um, and then you can see some of the vein work and the paint work on the legs, how the knees are kind of wrinkled up and then the stitching on the legs. It's just absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. What a fantastic figure. I have to say for me personally, this is an absolutely perfect figure set. Uh, and dare I say, one that I think is most definitely going to show up on my top 10 figures of the year. As a matter of fact, I think the Frankenstein creature set might have unseated the Headless Horseman as my favorite figure obscura set released to date. 
It combines many of my favorite things, which are monsters, Frankenstein's creature, um, old Victorian um, horror stories, horror stories in general, action figures. It kind of puts all of those things into one set um, for a very reasonable price. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. I understand that this set's not going to be for everybody. This Figura Obscura release won't be for every fan out there. And I totally get that. But I think between the parts usage, the pieces that you get, the accessories, the clothing, all of the little bits and bobs and all the set dressing, even if you're not a fan of the set, buying the set and having all of those parts that you can use in your uh, Mythic Legions or your or your other Figura Obscura sets, or you know even if you want to put some of these parts with Cosmics, which I've seen people do, I think you could totally do it. I think for what you get in the package, this is a no-brainer, win-win situation, absolutely home run. Congratulations, Four Horsemen, you've done it again. Had I not been a fan of Four Horsemen or not been collecting Figure Obscura, Mythic Legions, or anything like that, like I was a couple of years ago when I saw the uh, Headless Horseman set, this would be a set that would get me into it just like the Headless Horseman set did before. So... Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching this very long, very lengthy video, much longer than I normally do a video um, because I wanted to go over things in so much detail and I really, really was excited for this release. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you uh, for continuing to check us out over at Instagram. Uh, please continue to do so at Saturday Morning Toy Collector. I am your Saturday Morning Toy Collector. I'm your host, Mark, and I will see you in the toy aisles.